Hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel for what is going to be probably the last university sit down chatty styled video. I do have one coming next week but that's about my grades in final semester so if you're interested in that I hate to do a shameless plug this early on in the video but do give it a little subscribe and hit the notification bell down below so you don't miss out on that. However today's video as you can see from the title is going to be a very 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 honest review of my time at Coventry University. So if you're new around here, hello there, my name is Tanya and I've just finished my master's degree in applied psychology at Cov Uni, however before that I also did my undergraduate degree in psychology here too. So I've done four years consecutively, so some might say that I'm kind of an expert in all things Coventry University. I've also done roles within the uni as well, like student ambassador roles, so I've seen a lot, I've experienced a lot and so I've kind of got a lot to say, a lot of opinions, however I do want to put out there that these are just opinions and everything I say is based off of my experience and maybe influenced a little bit by you know some of the things that my friends have said to me so my experience is going to largely differ from another person who also studies here even on the same course but now that's out of the way I am just going to jump straight into the video and to start with I do have a few more general points that I wanted to put across that are mainly aimed at first year students or people that haven't studied at the uni before they're not really specific to psychology so here we go most of these are all you know pretty good points as well so the first point that I have is that the freshers fair here at Coventry University has got so much better over the years from when I first came here we've got Wilco's there who hand out loads of kitchen equipment we've got a year's supply of ketchup one time we have the standard Domino's but we also have Greg's so we have some really really good stands there and on top of that lots and lots and lots of societies there's going to be a society for you to join if that's your cup of tea so definitely make sure if you are a first year or even a second or a third who's just after some freebies like myself get down to the freshers fair check it out and again if you are after a society or a sport then the society and sports fairs are also pretty good as well there's a really good variety of stuff there my next point is one that I do feel like I have quite a lot to say about however I'm going to keep it brief and so my view on the accommodation here is that the majority of the rooms are actually really decent the only ones that I would probably shy away from if you know budget isn't a question is single hall standard rooms and priory hall however priory hall is a bit of a hard one to say shy away from because if you want catered that is where you're going to end up here at Coventry University but those are the two that I dislike the most just based on my taste so again check it out because this is just my opinion but I don't really like those however the majority of accommodation is really really nice the only downside to it is that in comparison to other unis and mainly just friends that I've got at other unis the accommodation is very very expensive so that is a downfall and again probably why some of the cheaper rooms I don't like as much but we move Moving on to the facilities here at Coventry University and the support. In general, I would say that the support here is quite good. So we have the Sigma Centre, which I have personally used, and they help you with any sort of maths and statistics. So if your degree like mine involved that, then you can go there and they will help you out with that. And they have been quite good to me in the past. There's also the Centre for Academic Writing, which is more English focused. So I don't really know what it involves because I've never needed to use it but if you're struggling with the wording of the assignment or you want them to have you know a read through and sit down with you and go through certain aspects of it obviously not tell you the answers but help you out a little bit they'll help you with that and then the library in general which is where those two support services are based I love the library here there's lots of space to work and on top of that if the library isn't for you there are lots of other workspaces that I like using at the uni my particular favorites are the Richard Crossman cafe it's really comfortable lots of plugs there's obviously a cafe there which is always a bonus although the food isn't that great and I also really like working in the hub because again lots of plug sockets computers are there if you need to use them and there are lots and lots of food options in the food court or in the shop downstairs for you to use so I do really like those workspaces 
And then the last sort of facility that I wanted to comment on is at the gym at Coventry University. Even though it's been a few years since I've been there, it is actually really, really nice. Very up to date, modern, clean. The changing rooms are clean, the showers are clean, or at least in my experience, it always has been. And if you're actually living in halls, the gym is actually free to use as part of your accommodation if you're staying with a future let's owned accommodation. So that is obviously a really big bonus as well because you don't have to pay gym membership for a whole year now moving on swiftly a little bit i've kind of separated these next few points into points that are a bit more specific for my undergraduate degree and then points that are a bit more specific for my master's degree so if you are a psychology student watching this then these will be really useful if you're not a psychology student they might still be useful they might still apply to other courses but again because it's due to my experience i obviously can't comment on if this applies you know university wide or not so for my undergraduate i've got a few good points and then a few bad points i thought we'd keep it nice and even so my first good point is that the majority of tutors and lecturers were all very very friendly and approachable and knowledgeable and genuinely just quite nice to interact with the next point is that the modules had such a good variety so it did kind of mean that there were obviously some that i didn't enjoy as much because psychology is a very very broad topic however it also meant that there were a lot of modules that i did enjoy so the variety of modules is good because it means that whether you know you've got an interest in stats or an interest in educational psychology there's definitely going to be something for you coming up at some point and a certain module for you to look forward to and then speaking of boring in third year here at Coventry University and I know a lot of other universities too you're actually allowed to choose between a few different optional modules so off the top of my head there was one about drugs and health I think there was a gender and sexuality module an educational psychology module slash child and I think a few others as well and you're allowed to pick one or two from those one that you'd study in first semester and one that you would study in second and I really really liked doing that and as I always say if you study something that you enjoy you tend to do better grade wise and that was definitely the case for me with these modules and although that is really great that you can choose those modules I do wish that it was something that the university would offer earlier on as well during you know first year and second year just so that it can kind of help develop your interest in certain things and now we've got the bad points which if you're studying here you might want to switch off this video right here you might want to listen to it it's completely up to you however there's not many I, I don't want to make out like there's a lengthy list the size of my arm there is only a few I've tried to keep this little and brief but the first point is completely you know university wide as far as I'm aware it's across the country Psychology is such a popular degree and I did not know this in sixth form and so when I walked in on the first day of lectures and there was not enough seats left in the room and I had to sit on the stairs and do my first lecture with my notepad on my lap hunched over like this, I was shocked. I was very, very shocked and that kind of happened, that situation, all the way through first year and then in second year, when a few people had dropped out or moved unis or, you know, extenuating circumstances had happened, there just seemed to be enough seats all of a sudden and people always had a seat or maybe people hadn't dropped out but just realised that the lectures weren't actually that great and so stayed at home instead. But whatever happened, there was always enough seats and I never had to worry about getting there 20 minutes early so I can sit down. And just leading on from that, because the course is such a big course and there's so many students it obviously means that the opportunity for not necessarily one-on-one -on -one support but just support in smaller groups is a lot slimmer you do have seminars where there's a lot less people in there which is a bit more directed towards the like focus of the work so the topic that you're doing but in lectures if you want to ask a question there's generally not much time for you to be able to do that because there are so many students sitting there if you don't feel comfortable putting your hand up during the lecture and you do want to wait till the end good luck to you and then leading on from that I've got a little point about the teaching and I have already mentioned this that in my experience the teaching it wasn't all that it was a lot of reading off screens even though the lecturers were also lovely they did just tend to stand there 
and read off the screen and a lot of the time I would sit there and just take the notes based off the PowerPoint rather than based off what the lecturer was saying and I tried to get ahead of doing that sometimes because I released the PowerPoints before the lecture so I'd write out the notes and leave a little bit of room around the edge so that if the lecturer said any additional information I would then write that in a different colour. So that could be a little bit of advice if you guys are looking for some but in general it was just reading off the screens and the teaching it wasn't that great to be honest and then the last bad point that i have to say is that my supervisor experience during undergraduate was also really not the one you were able to sort of say what your dissertation was going to be based on so i put clinical psychology and you do that at the end of second year and then when you're in third year your supervisor gets allocated and then i got a forensic psychologist as a supervisor which you know they're very closely linked like clinical and forensic obviously forensic psychologists deal with a lot of mental health issues and things like that but my experience with my particular supervisor was that it was quite poorly matched and they also tried to change my topic completely and succeeded because at that point not that I didn't really know how to stand up for myself that's kind of the wrong way of wording it but I wasn't assertive enough to stick with what I wanted to do which initially was something about the perceptions of mental health amongst social media and so my supervisor successfully changed that to perceptions of knife crime which I was all for because it was also a topic that I was really interested in and I did think that it would be a little bit easier than perceptions of mental illness and a little bit different to other people as well which kind of swayed me towards it but deep down I never ever wanted to do that topic and I was a bit disappointed because I've always known that I wanted to work in mental health and so doing a topic that was much more focused around mental health rather than focused on it a little bit was my preference and I was a bit disappointed well in fact a lot disappointed that I didn't get to do a topic that I truly had my heart set on. I'm now going to move on to the points about my master's degree so again as I said I've just done applied psychology masters at Coventry Uni I've done it without the work experience module because I didn't want to pay extra just to do work experience when I can find that myself and it's been a one year course and it's been all online because of covid my first points and actually all of my points are just bad points to be honest because a lot of the good points are obviously going to be the same as my undergraduate degree so yeah I don't want to make it sound like it was all bad because of the good points from the start of this video obviously still apply so I just thought I'd pick out some of the things that I didn't like rather than the things that I did like and repeat myself so the first thing and if you've watched my vlogs you are going to know this I did a module about consultancy and professional development and it was called CMI or something like that and it was terrible it was completely irrelevant to psychology in general and it was only relevant for psychology students that go and work in HR or business and that is why we took it because a lot of psychology graduates do go down that career path however that's not a career path that as a psychologist or wanting to be a psychologist or work in mental health or things like that it's not relevant to me at all and I do believe that that module should have been optional it was a very small module it was worth 10 credits but the amount of work required for it was insane and it was so hard and so stressful because I knew nothing about business I mean I'm a psychology student why would I and then because it was such a big course because I'd grouped people on there from lots of different courses across the uni the support was slacking I actually found a lot of the lecturers quite rude in their approach to dealing with students and it just wasn't the one it's it's the thing that's caused me the most stress this entire degree and I do believe that that should have been optional so Coventry University if you're watching this please make that module optional and then my last bad point because there is only two is that again my supervisor experience was terrible and this time it was even worse than my undergraduate basically the match was incredibly poor once again i was doing a clinical psychology dissertation because i wanted to do it about mental health if you're interested it was in perceptions of fictitious disorder imposed on self held by student healthcare professionals and my supervisor was an occupational psychologist and so that match even though you know they were dealing with a bit of stress among in the workplace it wasn't ideal and I did ask for it to be swapped I don't want people to comment and say oh why didn't you do anything about it I did ask to swap and was completely shut down 
completely shut down on multiple occasions so yeah that wasn't ideal and once again because it was a poor match and my topic didn't really align with their like professional preferences they tried to completely change my topic again and I was said no like I've had this experience before and it wasn't right for me and so I would really, really love to stick with fetish disorder. My supervisor was incredibly unsupportive and told me that they couldn't help because they had no idea about mental health. And so that was very, very disappointing. I can't lie, that is probably the worst piece of feedback that I can give out of my whole time here at Coventry. But we're going to move on from that because I'm aware I've spoken about that for quite some time now. Um, I've just got a last two points here and they're more covid based slash online learning based which is why i've left them till the end because i didn't want to mention them at the start just because as i said we're going back to face-to-face -face teaching fairly regularly as far as i'm aware so my first point is that online teaching here at coventry university was generally okay like it was as good as it could be given the circumstances obviously we were kind of the guinea pigs and i do think that for my master's degree it improved there was a lot more opportunity to ask questions and for one-on-one -on -one support or support within smaller groups but again that could be because the cohort for my master's was a lot smaller than my undergraduate cohort i think there was about 40 or 50 of us on my master's whereas for the undergraduate like i say at the start there must have been about 200 of us but yeah the teaching in general online was quite good and i did find it quite useful However, one thing that I didn't find useful, which was introduced because of COVID, was a no detriment policy. And unis all across the UK introduced this. And for the most part, my understanding is the no detriment policy applied to the individual at question. So at other universities, that was kind of the way that they were doing it. So if you as an individual performed like worsely, I don't think that's a word. You didn't perform as well in one module in comparison to your others they might give you a little boost in your grade or your percentage and kind of try and even that out a little bit given the fact that there was massive extenuating circumstances for everybody however at coventry and i know at other unis it was the same too it was applied to the whole cohort rather than the individual so if the cohort before you pre-covid performed a lot better within a module than your cohort did they would increase the grades from the whole cohort however i did think that this was just massively unfair because you might have a student working from home who has got a completely private workspace an amazing setup with an amazing computer that works really really well no distractions you know good food to fuel them and money to keep them going and things that applied more to covid like health issues within the family they might not have had any they might not have had work stresses money stresses i mean you don't need me to explain the stresses that come with covid we've all lived through it for like the last two years but then on the other hand you might have a student who struggled with all of those things and so you can't really judge the no detriment policy based on the whole cohort because everybody's circumstances as an individual are just that very individual and incredibly different from person to person so there is that but i suppose you know with covid being new and the no detriment policy being new it obviously isn't fully there yet it might need a bit of tweaking it might completely disappear i don't know what the plans are for the next academic year but that is the only thing that i've really got to say about that it did seem a little bit unfair for the students who perhaps had a bit more going on in their lives that they couldn't control and that was actually my last point of the video. I hope you managed to take a few points from this and found the information useful, whether you're a psychology student or just a student in general, new student or returning student. There might be a few points on there that are beneficial to you that you can take from this video. I really, really hope so. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below, especially if you don't want to miss out on my grade reveal coming next week. And other than that, I look forward to seeing you all very soon in my next next video. Goodbye.